Today's topic is theorems based on Hilbert adjoint operator. Now the first theorem is let H be a Hilbert space and let T belongs to B of H be bijective and its inverse is bound. That is T is a bounded linear operator from H to H and it is bijective and its inverse is bounded. Then we have to show that T inverse star that is Hilbert adjoint operator of T inverse exists and T inverse star is equal to inverse of T star that is Hilbert adjoint operator of T inverse is equal to inverse of Hilbert adjoint operator of T. Let us do this theorem as T is bijective. So it's inverse that is T inverse axis. As T is linear, so we know that it's inverse that is T inverse is linear. And it is also given that T inverse is bounded. So T inverse is a bounded linear operator on Hilbert space H. By existence theorem, we know that its Hilbert adjoint operator axis that is T inverse star axis and it is a bounded linear operator. We know that T into T inverse is equal to I is equal to T inverse into T. If we take Hilbert adjoint operators then we get T T inverse whole star is equal to I star is equal to T inverse T whole star. And since I is a self-adjoint operator, so I star is equal to I. And uh, we know that T T inverse whole star is equal to T inverse star into T star. That is, here we are we are taking um, Hilbert adjoint operators in reverse order. And this is equal to T star into T inverse star. And this, that means product of these operators is equal to identity operator. That means T inverse whole star is the inverse of T star. And so T star inverse axis and T star inverse is nothing but T inverse whole star. Now the next theorem is let H1 and H2 be Hilbert spaces and let T belongs to B of H1, H2 that is T is a bounded linear operator from Hilbert space H1 to Hilbert space H2. Then we have to prove that the kernel of T is equal to T star of H2 whole orthogonal complement. That is orthogonal complement of T star of H2. And second result is kernel of T star is equal to uh, uh, orthogonal complement of T of H1. A third result C is closure of T of H1 is equal to orthogonal complement of kernel of T star. Fourth result D is Closure of T star of H2 is equal to orthogonal complement of kernel of T. Let us prove this theorem. Now the first result A is we have to prove that kernel of T is equal to orthogonal complement of T star of H2. So we start with an element of kernel of T. Since T is a mapping from H1 to H2, so, take some element x in H1 such that x belongs to kernel of T. x belongs to kernel of T if and only if T maps x to T. So, Tx is equal to 0. And Tx is an element of H2. So, and this is equal to 0. So, in a product of Tx, with every element of H2 is 0. That means in a product of T, X and Y is equal to 0 for every Y 
NH2. And in this, we have if and only if in a product of x t star y is equal to 0 for every y in H2. By definition of Hilbert adjoint operator, in a product of t x y is equal to in a product of x t star y. And we have if this, if and only if x is orthogonal to t star y because its inner product uh, with t star y is 0. So, x is orthogonal to t star y for every t star y in t star of h2. Since y belongs to h2, so t star y belongs to t star of h2. That means x is orthogonal to t star of h2. If and only if x belongs to orthogonal complement of t star of h2 because x is orthogonal to set t star h2. So, x belongs to its orthogonal complement that is x belongs to orthogonal complement of t star of h2. Hence, we have shown that kernel of t is equal to orthogonal complement of t star of h2 because x belongs to kernel of t if and only if x belongs to orthogonal complement of t star of h2. So, these sets are equal that means kernel of t is equal to orthogonal complement of t star of h2. Now, the second result B is we have to show that kernel of t star is equal to orthogonal complement of t of h1. So, we start with an element of n t kernel of t star. So, let y be an element of h2 such that y belongs to kernel of t star. Note that t star is a mapping from h2 to h1. So, here uh, kernel of t star is a subset of set h2. So, we are taking an element y in h2 such that y belongs to kernel of t star. And y belongs to kernel of t star means t star maps y to 0. We have t star y is equal to 0. And this if and only if in a product of t star y and x is equal to 0 for every x belongs to h1 because t star y is an element of h1 and if this is equal to 0, so its inner product with every element of h1 is 0. So, inner product of t star y and x is equal to 0 for every x belongs to h1. If and only if in a product of y and x uh, uh, y and t double star x is equal to 0 for every x belongs to h1 by definition of uh, Hilbert adjoint operator in a product of t star y x is equal to in a product of y t double star x. If and only if in a product of y and t x is equal to 0 for every x belongs to h1 because we know that uh, actually we have proved in the last lecture that is t double star is equal to t. So, here we have inner product of y and t x is equal to 0 for every x belongs to h1. This implies uh, that y is orthogonal to tx for every tx in t of h1. Since x belongs to h1, so tx belongs to t of h1. If and only if y is orthogonal to the set t of h1. If and only if y belongs to orthogonal complement of set t of h1. Uh, we have taken an element y in x t star and we have shown 
that y belongs to kernel of t star if and only y belongs to uh, orthogonal complement of t of h1. So, these sets are equal. Hence, kernel of t star is equal to orthogonal complement of t of h1. Now, we have to prove third result c that is closer of t of h1 is equal to orthogonal complement of kernel of t star. First, we shall show that closer of T of H1 is contained in orthogonal complement of kernel of T star. And then we shall show the reverse in close. So, we start with an element of closer of T of H1. Since T is the mapping from H1 to H2, so T of H1 is a subset of H2. And so, we start with an element uh, y of h2 such that y belongs to closer of t of h1. Then we know that there exists a sequence txn in t of h1 such that txn converges to y as n tending to infinity. Here we know that since txn is a sequence in t of h1 that is xn is a sequence in h1. As for each z in kernel of t star, a t star z is equal to 0 because t z belongs to kernel of t star. So, t star z is equal to 0 and since t star is a mapping from h2 to h1, so t star z is an element of h1. So, its inner product with any element of h1 is 0. In particular, its inner product with each xn is 0. So, we can write in the product of xn t star z is equal to 0 for every z in kernel of z, in kernel of t star and for every n in n. This implies that in a product of t xn and z is equal to 0 for every z belongs to kernel of t star and for every n belongs to n. By definition of Hilbert s joint operator in a product of xn and t star z is equal to in a product of t xn and z. And this implies that limit n tending to infinity in a product t xn and z is equal to 0 for every z in kernel of t star and for every n belongs to n and this implies that um, since inner product is a continuous function so limit can be taken inside so we have inner product of limit n tending to infinity t x n and z is equal to 0 for every z in kernel of t star and this implies that in a product of yz is equal to 0 since limit txn and tending to infinity y so we have in a product of yz is equal to 0 for every z belongs to kernel of t star and this implies that y is orthogonal to z for every z belongs to kernel of t star that is y belong uh, y is orthogonal to the set kernel of t star and this implies that y belongs to orthogonal complement of kernel of t star. So, uh, we have shown that any element of closer of t of h1 belongs to orthogonal complement of kernel of t star. That means t of h1 is contained in orthogonal complement of kernel of t star. Mark it as 1. Conversely, let y belongs to orthogonal complement of kernel of t star. And since uh, by b, we know that kernel of t star is equal to orthogonal complement of t of h1. So, orthogonal complement of kernel of t star is equal to double orthogonal complement of t of h1 
and that means um, um, or, um, in a product of y with every element of orthogonal complement of t of h1 is 0. That is in a product of y z is equal to 0 for every z belongs to orthogonal complement of t of h1. And this implies that y belongs to t of h1 since y is orthogonal to every element of orthogonal complement of t of h1 so y belongs to t of h1 and t of h1 is a contained in closure of t of h1 so we have shown that any element of orthogonal complement of kernel of t star is contained in closure of t of h1 and so uh, orthogonal complement of kernel of t star is contained in closure of t of h1 from 1 and 2 we get the equality that is closure of t of h1 is equal to orthogonal complement of kernel of t star now the fourth result i am giving you as home assignment because the proof is similar to the proof c thank you